G'day, Greg Miller from The Joy of Wood. In this video, we're going to talk about saws and sawing. Love this saw. This saw belonged to my great grandfather, who was a coach, builder, and wheelwright in East Perth, here in Western Australia. It's over 100 years old, and it's been doing a lot of work in that time. If only this handle on this core saw could talk, hey? So I'm the current custodian. A good saw like this can last for generations. It can be sharpened again and again and again. That's very different to a lot of these modern saws. Got some examples here. So you can see these older saws have these really beautifully shaped handles. That tells you a lot about the quality of the saw. In stark contrast to these modern saws here with these nasty plastic handles. What's interesting about these teeth as well is that sure they're really sharp when you get them but the teeth are hardened so it's a low-grade steel, the teeth can't be sharpened, so it's a throwaway saw, which is pretty ordinary when you think about the environment and the energy that's gone into producing them. It just doesn't seem very responsible to have throwaway saws, does it? Here's another variation. So this one here has got the stiffener on the back, just like my great-grandfather's saw, but uh, it's very, very thin, and this particular one is bent, and they all have a bit of a tendency to do that. Here's another one of these hard point saws. Sure, it'll cut like crazy, but see the handle is just all wrong. You try using that handle all day, you get a saw hand. It's just not shaped ergonomically to suit the hand. So you see the massive contrast between those two there. So yeah, try and avoid these if you can. These are not very nice, but if that's all you got, that's all you got. Right, let's do some sawing. So I'm going to cut this across here. Now you see on the wall behind me, I have many saws to choose from. All right, they all have different jobs. These ones with the stiffener along the back here, all these members of the back saw family, they like that because it keeps the saw nice and straight. So it's for very accurate cutting of joints and things. For really nice control of the saw. These saws here, these panel saws, those blades bend. So they will go all the way through the piece of timber without the stiffener getting in the way. Me and this go back a long way. I got this saw over 50 years ago when I turned 10, it was my first saw. But you can see here, the saw's being dumbed down quite a bit. It's lost a bit of its shape, but it's still okay. Still got a bit of this going on in here, but it is a very chunky one. And that's a saw from the 1960s. Some of them will have much bigger teeth, this one here. So the geometry of the tooth determines what it does, not just the size. And this one here is designed for what we call ripping, cutting along the grain. Obviously, big teeth for a very quick action. Uh, it'll do a rough cut, but it'll cut like crazy. So you can see the handle still got a nice bit of shape to it. So it's still a post Second World War handle, but it's still got a nice bit of a shape to it. Some of these real oldies here go back a long way, see a lot of variety. They all have different jobs. The job we've got right now is to cut this piece off here. So I'm just going to use my great grandfather's saw. Now these are often referred to, called these days a tenon saw. In the past they were divided up into carcass saws and sash saws and tenon saws. Uh, generically they just seem to be called tenon saws now. So the stiffener on the back is going to keep that blade nice and straight. It's a very, very useful saw. So one of the important things is we need that piece of wood to be held still. One of the things that helps a lot is to use a bench hook. This is your traditional bench hook. Call a bench hook because it hooks onto the front of the bench. So if I hold my piece of wood, push it up against there, hold it there, away we go with a sawing action. Now this one is obviously for a right-hander. The left-handed ones have this path for the saw on the other side. I'm right-handed. So that means I've got the saw in my right hand. You notice the way that I'm holding it. Pointy finger forwards, index finger extended along the front. That keeps the wrist straight. So if you grip a saw like this, it rolls the wrist around. But when you straighten that finger up, it straightens the wrist which makes it all work better. It's been taught this way for centuries. 
what they call three one thumb and a lot of these older saws I can't even get all my fingers in there because these are made to be held properly so they have that smaller um, handle there okay so I'm going to push this up against here now to get this started I'm going to bring this finger up and you see the saw is pushing against it that way I can guide exactly where it starts and I'm also starting on the far side over there I'm not starting with a saw flat because that will tend to skid across the piece of wood so starting up on that nice little angle there and the really important thing with this is getting my eye directly above the saw one of the things which helps facilitate that is getting your feet in the right place so because I'm right-handed I've got my left foot forward and my right leg back turns my body so I'm sawing across my body that automatically puts my eye directly above the saw now that is where I want to be and then it's a nice rhythmic action so I can actually see both sides of the saw at the same time that nice rhythmic action works beautifully if I have my eye out to the side the saw will always turn towards the eye so I'll get a wonky cut so like with a lot of hand tool work it's the position of your body in particular your eye that makes all the difference nice rhythm back and forth it's all coming from the shoulder here we go beautiful job so that's using this saw to do that nice cut just there in amongst all the different projects and things that we make this will be like a blade for one of our garden windmills so here we have a very fine bit of plywood and to cut that I need to make sure the saw stays at a very low angle uh, if I cut it in this fashion I'm just going to smash it to pieces so I'll just push it up against there use that finger again to guide it so I'm going to have the saw on the what we call the waist side of the line that's the bit I want so the saw's just on this side of the line you should still be able to see the line after you've done the cut just down the side of it so there it is just there and we've done that and it's not smashed on the back beautiful so a fine tooth saw on a low angle is how we want to cut plywood check out these beautiful boxes we sell the kits for these so this one here has these curved ends like that so for that I need a saw that cuts around corners this one here has this cut straight across so that would work well with a saw like this I'm going to show you a couple of different methods for how we might do this so if I want to cut that through there I can just push this corner up against the upstand on my bench hook and I can hold it there you can see I'm just cutting down the outside of the line and I can cut it just like this you see that so I'm just cutting down the side of the line because I will clean that up with a block plane to take it back to the line to get it beautiful so away we go now if I had a kid doing this and they didn't have the hand strength like me to be able to hold that we might use a cramp here and cramp that on push that up against there so it's like an extra hand so that's going to hold it so I, I haven't got the saw flat yet but I'm also not chewing up my bench hook I've just got it on a nice angle and when we're sawing like this where I'm looking is not there but it's here and I should be able to see because I'm looking down over the top of the saw I should be able to see the line and make sure that the saw is parallel to that line back and forth we go this is a fine saw so it takes a little bit longer but that's okay that nice rhythmic action works beautifully I could get a saw with larger teeth that'll do the job I'm going to show you another way of doing it so that is a nice straight cut ready for the block plane to clean that up beautifully okay so another way of doing this is to use a panel saw so when we use a panel saw which is like my old friend here I'm going to cut along this line on a sawhorse 
So that's what a sawhorse is for. And a sawhorse is normally the height of the back of your knee. So when we're working with kids, we'll have lower sawhorses. You can even saw on this for small kids, it would work really well. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up here. I'm gonna use my knee to cramp that down. Use my thumb to get that started. And away we go. Cutting along here. So this will cut a bit quicker, but maybe a little bit rougher. So the secret for using a panel saw is the optimum angle in here is about 45 to 60 degrees. So again, if you had a kid doing this, to make it easier for them, you might grab one of these cramps, put it on here. It's like that extra hand. Cramp that onto there. So got it away from here, so we're not gonna cut the sawhorse. Now, what about two-handed sawing? You never ever hold a saw like this. When you do two-handed sawing, a good old saw has that little dip right there. That's to take the muscle of the thumb, and that hand sits there. So that hand pushes down, guiding the other one. So that gives you more pressure, more power. That is how you use a saw with two hands. I'm just gonna go back to one so I can hold that gently. So remember that, you never wanna hold a saw like this. If you're gonna use two hands, it goes in there. And all the old saws have that because they were made to be used properly, not like those awful plastic handle things. Okay, so that's using a panel saw to do the other side. But what if you were doing this one with the curves? For that, we need a coping saw. Here's a coping saw. So the coping saw has this very fine blade. Now all these other saws here cut when you push. This one cuts when you pull, because otherwise you take the tension out of the frame and your blade can ping out. So these ones cut when you pull, which is different to all of those ones there. I'm not talking about Japanese saws here, I'm just talking about the traditional Western style of saws, because that's what we do. We do traditional woodworking here and the European fashion. All right, so we've got this little blade in here. That can cut round very tight corners. Call it a coping saw because coping is where you have one molding where you just cut to go over the top of another molding. So you've got to be able to cut one of those really tight curves and things so it all comes together. And that's what coping is. So a coping saw, that's what its job was. But we use it for lots of curved cuts in the workshop. So I only really need the, um, the pencil line on one side. I've done it on two, just so you can see from where you are. Put that back out of the way. I'm gonna park this into the vise. So I have the luxury of a vise for this. So, same story. It's all about where the eye is. I need my eye up above this. So it's a nice, easy, back and forth action. And to follow the curve, all I've got to do is to gradually rotate the wrist while we're sawing. You also notice I started with the blade 90 degrees here. That's about where you stand. If I stand over here and I put it in there, I'm going to have a cut which is going to considerably reduce the size of the material. So getting it on the right angle at the start. Okay, down we come. Now you notice as we get down here, it gets to a point where I can't go any further because the frame is bearing on the top of the wood. So I'll gently find that path out of there. I'll show you one of the tricks with the coping saw. This is threaded into here. So I'm gonna hold that, loosen this, and I'm gonna turn that around. Hold that while I tighten it, and then this one, make it parallel to that. So these tell you which way the blade is pointing. So now you see the frame is out of the way. Okay, and away we go. Now if I stop sawing and let that go, 
you see the weight of the saw, the, the frame turns it around. So if I start cutting now, it's going to go straight into there. So before I resume sawing, I've got to pick the saw up and turn it back so I'm on the right direction. And away we go. There we go. So that would just get cleaned up with a spoke shave and that would be beautiful. All right, what if you don't have the luxury of a vice at home? All you've got is your kitchen table. Well, this is how we can do it. I'll just straighten that up. Okay. I can hold this flat. I want this to be straight up and down. Again, I've got my eye where the action is. My eye's not miles away. And away we go. So that's how we can cut. don't have a vice. So this works really well. So I can always come in from both ends if I wanted to and they meet in the middle. But what I'd like to show you is I've shown all one-handed sawing. That method there is one-handed. The other method is one-handing. There are some people who like to cut with two hands on a saw. So I'll show you how we do that. So I park this in here. So to use the saw with two hands, and I'm going to get this out the side here already because I know where we're going with that. The important thing is getting your body in the right position. I want this right in the center of my body and my legs are running this way so the line across my toes is parallel with the front of the bench. That sets me up to cut square to this. Two hands on here <laughs> and what I've got to do is pump this back and forth right in the center of my body. So that's the two-handed method. Nice and gentle at the end so we don't smash it. So there you go. Three different ways of working with the coping saw. It's a very, very useful saw and uh, fantastic. Blades are easily broken. If you do any of this kind of action, because they can't cope with that, they keep that nice, straight, rhythmic action like we do with all sawing. And it'll cut like a dream. Okay. What about this little conundrum? When we make the small garden windmills, this is the boss that goes in the centre. And that boss, the pitch face on here, is what helps give that pitch to the blade. And the other one is going to go this way, so when the wind hits it, it will turn in the wind. So how are we going to cut this? I'll show you. We're going to start out doing this saw cut here, cutting that face down there. So I'll put my bench hook on there and set this up right here. Now, if you're doing this with kids at home, you might find they have trouble with just hooking it onto the front of the table or whatever. If you've got a vise, you can always put that into the vise. And that's one problem dealt with. The other thing you can do is use the cramp Put the cramp on. You notice I've got that pointing away from me, so you can't whack your hand into it. Got my trusty tenon saw here. I'm going to get this started, and away we go. So that's how we can do it with kids, so they can be less focused on holding the piece of wood, at, at, uh, more focused on the sawing. This hand still goes here. Don't let them saw like this. Just let them learn how to do it properly. It'll always work better. So when you look at the end of this, you'll see there's the angle. We've got that marked on the end. That's where the saw's going to go. So the saw's going to end up there, like that. So we're not cutting down the front, we're just cutting down that side. So that just means we put our saw on that angle. Now I'm not going to go past here, and I'm just going to check a little bit more down the front there. Nice, easy, gentle control. A little bit more. Look at that. Beautiful. 
So you can see I've just cut along the side of the line. You can see half of that line is still there, so that's good. Now what we're going to do is cut this piece down through here. If I try cutting this way, it's very hard to get the saw oriented where it needs to go. So you'd always cut from this face. It's going to go that way around. Now with a vise, this is very easy. I'll put it into here, set that up, and I'm going to cut down the line there. Now, no good me standing here and kicking the saw across. I need this nice and straight. So I'm going to purposefully move over here so that that goes in a nice straight line. Use my finger to get it started. I can't cut my finger because it's up above the teeth and you never hold a piece of wood like this. So get that started, line it up. Now I'm looking down here, get that lined up and away we go. So this is where having your eye in the right place is really significant. You need that to come down the hill. Backwards and forwards. So as we get to the bottom, the saw should be sitting nice and flat there. Look at that, beautiful. Now, I, this is snapped off here just a little bit early. So the secret to taking that out is to hold the saw right where you want it. Either this method, if you can reach over the top, so we're keeping the saw flat on that surface or pushing it this way. And just let it slide past your fingers. That cleans it up beautifully. Absolutely lovely. So there you go. So those are nicely cut, ready to go. A pair of these on here and I've got a propeller ready to happen. So, saws and sawing. It's a fantastic skill. It's a wonderful thing. This is a modern version of a saw, which is okay. Uh, you can see it's not hard point here. It can be sharpened, got a nice stiff back on it. Uh, the handle's still a bit clunky, but at least it's still got some of the right shape that makes it fit well into the hand. Uh, they're out there, they're available, but do yourself and do your kids a favor. Use a real saw rather than the plastic ones. It'll make an, all the difference to your sawing. Remember, it's all about where your eye is, how you hold the saw, where you position your body. So have a lot of fun sawing. See you in the workshop. Cheers.